top Republican on the House Joint Economic Committee, Kevin Brady of Texas. Uh, Congressman, welcome back to the show. Good to see you. Jerry, thanks for having me. All right, well, we had a bombshell report from the CBO today at the Congressional Budget Office. They say that our national debt could be twice the nation's GDP in 25 years. Take a look at this. Uh, shocking the increase that we're seeing over time. And if you drill down into that, what you find out is that 2011, this year, our debt is 70% of GDP, 70% of our total economic output. What do you make of that? Well, look, how many red uh, flashing lights have to go off before uh, lawmakers actually tackle this debt and deficit? We're coming up on this debt limit vote, which is a great opportunity to do it. But, Jerry, there's really, I I'm always amazed in Washington, we've got so many people in denial about how dangerous these deficits are. Reports like this help, but I don't know what it takes to get their attention. Well, you know, I want to show you some more of these numbers because they're they're really amazing and depressing. Spending as part as a percentage of the economy, and that's federal spending. Today it's at 24%, 2021, 26%, 2035, 34%. And what we don't have on the full screen here is that revenues don't keep pace. Uh, we don't have the money coming in to cover these increases in spending. Uh, you sit on the Joint Economic Committee. Uh, you're a member of Ways and Means. You're a person in the driver's seat when it comes to this. What are you going to do about it? Well, two things. One, we need to make the point, uh, and I think the public gets this, is that you can't, we, we don't have a revenue problem. Uh, as the economy recovers, we'll get back more revenue. But we can never meet all these new spending obligations, and you can't tax your way back to a balanced budget. You could double everyone's taxes in America today, we'd still run a deficit. So it is spending, and those numbers actually are a little optimistic uh, from the really? standpoint of a lot of it doesn't count uh, the debt we owe to each other in Social Security, Medicare, which already puts us over 100 percent of our economy in our total debt. So we're way past the yellow warning fly, uh, lights, deep into the red. Uh, we've got to act. All right. Well, you say you've got a fresh approach. What is it? Yeah, today we introduced a new bill that really takes the lessons learned from Graham Rudman, uh, which worked for a while until it got too tough. And then we take the lessons from states, which tools did the best job, uh, were used the most by governors to control spending. We put that in a new bill called the MAP Act, hmm. which is Maximizing Americans' Prosperity. In effect, Jerry, it puts a guardrail around the Ryan budget plan, the path to prosperity, and keeps Congress on that path till we shrink the size of federal government. Well, interesting stuff. I want you to uh, respond to something Senator Kent Conrad had to say. Uh, here's, he's a Democrat. Here's what he says needs to happen. Both Democrats and Republicans, he says, have to move off their fixed positions and make concessions in order to reach an agreement. That is what is needed to truly put this country back on a f sound fiscal course. What do you make of the, that statement? You know, uh, on the surface, it sounds fine. In Washington, what that means is um, Democrats want tax increases, uh, and they're stuck on tax increases, and we know that won't work. And so Republicans are very firm. It's got to be spending. Uh, that's the solution to our problem, and uh, frankly, we're staying on that principle. Will you make concessions? On spending, on going deeper, then we would like to, sure, on tax increases, absolutely not, mainly because it's the wrong solution, both for our deficit and definitely for our economy. You know, we're having these uh, kind of uh, off the radar conversations going on with the vice president about the debt ceiling, what to do about it. And today we calculated the number of days that Congress is in session to get this work done. It is only 16 days. You guys have just 16 days because you're taking a heck of a lot of vacation times. You're French school teachers who work more days than you guys do. You know, it's no wonder that congressmen rate so low when it comes to public confidence. Can you get this done? Can we look forward to having some kind of resolution this summer when it comes to the debt ceiling? You know, Jerry, we can get this done if we focus on spending, and Republicans are committed not to raise that debt ceiling without substantial cuts. Secondly, you know, I think the new schedule uh, is good for democracy because it pushes lawmakers who've been hiding in Washington back into their districts, back in those town halls. I think that's very important. That's been part of the problem. Lawmakers are disconnected. But the answer ultimately is yes. Not only can we do this, we have to. We but just Congressman, have to. 
you guys push it to the last hour and now we're talking about maybe having some kind of step-by-step -step solution to the uh, to the debt ceiling you, you never get anything done what is it going to take uh, to get some kind of resolution to these very important questions as you just said yeah, I'm with you. I think lawmakers always put things off till 11.59 when the deadline is midnight. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens again. The one difference is the Republican House is pushing for the resolution now so that with those few remaining days, as you said, we can deal with the policy and not be facing some deadline, real or imagined, that puts us in the wrong position. So I think the sooner we cut, the better. All right, Congressman Brady, great to talk to you as always. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks for having me.